What sucks when you get married? Ooh, ooh. Okay. It's going to be a spicy one. I don't know, actually. Okay. Our wives don't For... listen to this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doors closed. <laughs> Top answer says, finding out that your in-laws who put up with you and try to act look nice till you got married are really a-holes that normal people don't want to deal with. Ooh. Marrying a Karen-in-law? That doesn't sound like a good time at all. Did you marry a-hole in-laws? No, nah, they're the best. They're so great. Yeah? Yeah. Are, Super chill. Are, is your family the a-hole in-laws to your wife? Nah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> no, I... I am lucky enough. I, my in-laws are all really freaking awesome. So, yeah, I've I have no issues on that. Um, in-laws get along. It's great. Yeah. Wait, like your in-laws with your parents? Yeah. Like my. They get along. Yeah. Man, my my family and my in-laws. I mean, they don't get a. Only... They don't get together a lot, but. Um, they get along. They do get along. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think my parents and my in-laws have only uh, been around each other like three times. Hmm. It was like the meeting of them, which was like two months before we got married. And then we had our, like our dinner thing, like a family dinner thing, kind of like a luncheon, but the day before, and then the wedding day. And <laughs> we wanted to get them together again at some point but we just haven't had the time so mm. uh the next one these are very like um <laughs> very tame i must say yeah okay, well okay for better or worse includes the worst when your spouse has a chronic health issue a mental health issue substance abuse problems you have committed to be there for at least a reasonable effort in carrying through it together and that can be taxing beyond belief. Mm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, that I can see that. That's. I mean, you, when you're single, you just worry about yourself, right? But then, now when you become when you come together, you're like, you're twice as likely to have sucky situations happen to you. It's like mm. Hogwarts battle. Mm. The more players yeah. you add, the more harder the game is. Yeah. Okay, here's this one. It sucks when your partner and um, and sometimes you get too comfortable and complacent. You start slacking on the little things that matter to each other. No one likes to have to remind their partner to do things they used to do automatically. Yeah. Do you, are you a slacker? Oh, yeah, man. I slack all the time. I don't do my hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh... As you can tell, um, but I used to like gel my hair every day, you know, always looking good. But now when you get married, you don't, I don't know, I should, but I hate sleeping with gel on my pillow because when you sleep, right? Sleep. Yeah. The pomade and all the hair products get on your pillow and then it gets on your face when you're turning and then that's how uh, acne grows. Well, I'm sorry. I think I'm gonna, I think I missed this. You said you're a night shower. No, like when you go to bed. So you shower in the morning and you put product in your hair and yeah. then 10 hours later. Yep. And then you go to bed, right? So the product is still in your hair. So you're sleeping well, with much, product on your pillow. But how much product are you using? <laughs> pomade. I gotta use pomade for this. This stuff is thick. I, I use pomade. And then it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very pasty product. Meaning, if it gets okay. on your skin, then you get acne. You, you get the, you, you get the, yeah, the yeah. acne. <laughs> yep. uh, I don't, you know, when I, I, when I used, like, actual hair gel, I had that problem. Uh, and, and even worse, it would get flaky. Mm, and so, that. like, I would wake yeah. up and I'll have all these flakes. And, like, it, it made me super self-conscious because people, people would, like, point it out. And they're like, oh, do you have dandruff? I'm like, no, it's just a hair gel. And like, that's because like when I was younger, like teenager, early 20s, like I wasn't the most hygienic person. And uh, 
I didn't take showers every single day. Sometimes it was like every two days or so. Um, and yeah, so I would get little flakes here and there. Uh, it, was, it was bad, but uh, the product that I use right now doesn't do that. So mine doesn't. It, it's yeah. it's more of a it's more of an OCD thing for me too. I mm-hmm. hate I hate, uh, back when sense. I worked that at makes- Starbucks, I would come home and I was really oily, right? You get this like film of coffee oil on your face. I I, if I didn't shower, I would not go to sleep on my bed. I would sleep somewhere else, like on the couch or somewhere <laughs> until I took a shower because I would I did not want that oil on my bed. <laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever went through that. I yeah, so that may be the same thing with my boy. hair. I don't know if it's true. Okay, so out of the two of you, who who slacks more? Um, eh, me, of course. It yeah, has to be me. Does yeah. your wife get ready like every day then? Oh yeah, she gets ready. Like she gets up an hour early to get ready, like makeup and everything. And she doesn't do it for me. She doesn't do it for me. She does it for herself because yeah, it makes it feel good and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's no, good. I, I that. That I I agree with that hundred percent. It's it's just funny because uh, uh it was my my wife pointed out to me what was it like two weeks ago we I, I had some time off from work right we went on vacation to yeah. Florida and and came back and I still had some time off from work and even though I I didn't have anywhere to go or was gonna go out or had visits or anything like that I get ready every day like I'll I'll put on pants and a shirt socks like the whole ninety yards even if I'm not going anywhere. And so she was telling me that she's going to try and make a, a better effort to, like, not just be in pants all day <laughs> when she doesn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. And and, I was, and and same thing. I was like, hey, if you're going to do that, just make sure you do it for you. Like, you don't need to impress me. You're, But I want you to feel good, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, feel, yeah. feel comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. Like, if you want to get ready, get ready. Um, so that's great. This one. Your spouse's family's your spouse's family problems become yours. That's a pretty big one. Yeah. That's a big one. I know a lot yeah. of... Uh, <sighs> there's, there's some people I know that got married and then they find out that the the in-laws are horrible um, or they just mistreat the spouse. Uh, it's just... Uh, it's one of those things like before you get married, you should probably know the the you meet the in-laws and if it's something you can deal with then you probably can get married but i think this one is more about um i guess it's related right <laughs> if your spouses if your in-laws have a lot of family issues then you take yeah and you know, i think uh i want to say that personally it, it, we're we're a little lucky i mean my, my family is really small so we don't really bring a lot of uh uh, family drama. Mm. I mean, yeah, there's drama. 100% there's drama, but it's it's pretty distant, you know? Uh, with her family, I, I, I honestly don't think there's that much drama. Uh, I think they communicate a lot more often than I do with my family, though, so I get to hear about it all the time. And when things happen, like, I'm in the know. And then it's, it is, yeah, like, it's my problem now, right? Like, if something needs to be done and they ask for our help it's not just her help it's both of our help yeah but yeah definitely like definitely pulls you but it's it's weird because i i don't know that i you know how there's a saying that's like you don't just marry her you marry the family yeah that is true like yeah i and i i didn't want to agree with that but that's just the truth that's just how it is like it's Unless they're not in in talking terms like your spouse with the family, I think that they're. I mean, they're your family now. They're your in laws. It makes sense. Okay, here's another one from user fart that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Figuring out the balance between together time and alone time that works for both of you. Oh, that's figuring a... out that it's okay to say. Do you just want to vent or do you want me to provide a solution when your spouse goes off? Uh, why does that suck? Those realizations don't happen super early in marriage. So you realize all of the lost time and go, 
Dang. This is this is a big one. The first one, like the together time and alone time, that is something that I feel like, like we are still figuring out. We've been married a year and a half. A little over a year and a half. And there's been times when like we like I have to talk to her about it. I'm like, hey, like can I like be alone? <laughs> like I like I feel like I need to be with you all the time, right? And it's like Oh, but I want to do my own thing. And it's like, it's such a conflict yeah, in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Same issue with us. Thankfully, we, we figured it out. So we yeah. just have designated days. She has her day. I have my day. And it's just worked out. I think, I mean, yeah. that's like one of the things I had to let go of. Because my one day that I have this, you know, now, it used to be the whole week, right? So yeah. downsizing to those five me time weeks, days down to one day. And it's fine because if I had more, I think I would feel more guilty. I would actually feel guilty about having so much <laughs> me time. So it works so, out. So what, what, is, what does together time mean to you, though? I, I don't know. Is, <laughs> I want to know. Is it, like, is it, let's... can you be like on your computer while they're watching TV? And then is that still together time? Well, see, that's, I think that's the, that's a, that's an important question. I think it has to do a lot with like the love languages, you know, like yeah. physical touch yeah. and quality time and like gift giving and stuff like that. Because to me, uh, like I'm a quality guy type of person, but quality time, um, it doesn't, to me at least. I know it's every, I know it's different for everybody. I I know that. Yeah. To me, I can be in the same room as somebody else and not say a single word. I can be drawing. I can be reading. Being on my computer, and this other person can be doing exactly the same thing on their own end, and I I'm satisfied. Like I feel good. Yeah. Um, now I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't need communication. Obviously I, I like communication. I do want to communicate. Uh, but when we're in the same room, it's a we're proximity in the same room a lot, thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to be in constant communication yeah. with them for it to be quality time. Um, but I feel there's going back to that, like being complacent and like kind of like chilling and like not caring. I feel like we both like to watch TV shows to relax. Yeah. And so we do fall into that trap of like, well, we're done with the work. We're done with our chores. What do we do now? We just sit down and watch TV. And then suddenly it's 11 p.m. It's like, oh, it's time for bed. And it's like, was this alone time? And then you just happened to be there? Or was this <laughs> together time? And we just happened to do the same like and so somebody tell me please <laughs> yeah oh man that, that's funny the tv time uh, yeah that's we used to have a big problem with that because that was like our go-to and it wasn't really quality time because you know you just sit there you don't even you can talk to each other but most of the time you're just sitting and watching and so we tried doing these things Trying to like figure out what to do, maybe like um, play board games or do something where it's like actually interacting with each other. Yeah. And then a baby came. <laughs> and now we're so tired you, by the end of the day. You, you Did you interact with too much? <laughs> we are so tired. We just want to sit and watch TV and we're fine with that. Because yeah. thinking about doing something and then doing it is just, it's exhausting. There's a an episode of The Big Bang Theory towards the end of this the the show. I think it's like season nine or ten, where Leonard and Penny. Are you familiar with the characters? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Le Leonard and Penny. Like Leonard is like forty, right? And Penny's like twenty eight, twenty nine, and uh, or he's he's almost forty. Anyway, they're they're like going out on a date and they're trying to figure out what to do, and. Then she finds like this midnight show thing, and they're like, "Oh, do you want to do this?" She's like, "Yeah, let's do it." I'm like, "All right, yeah, we're we're gonna do something." And then she's trying to buy tickets. She's like, "Oh, it's sold out." And I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" She's like, thank goodness. Like, yeah, it is like a, a a relief, a sigh of relief. Yeah. And and it's weird because I I used to like always when I go out and like 
time didn't matter. But lately, like, there's things where if we just can't make it for whatever reason, it's kind of like, oh, good, we just get to Relax. chill. Yeah. yeah, like, we don't have to worry about it. I think that's, like, that's part of the funny. whole adulting memes that are out there. Yeah. yeah. It's just, like, you guys, you just got to pick your battles, man. We don't, we don't have as much energy as we did. Right. It's a, it's a big pill to swallow. Hard, hard to swallow pill. 